Welcome to the University of Finley Art and Culture Show. I am Sharenda, your hostess, and we are excited to have you tuning in today. I would also like to welcome Mr. Troy Stendi. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. It's good to be here. It is wonderful having you here. Troy and I have been friends for many, many years, Lots. and we have had some amazing journeys together yeah. through the years. And I am so excited to be able to introduce you to the viewing audience today. Troy, you have a a special story, um, mm. but you are accomplished in so many ways. Your gifts are plenty and many. Oh, thank you. So Troy is an author. Mm -hmm. He is an accomplished gymnast. He in, is- In the past. <laughs> but you have been an accomplished gymnast, and he's also a motivational speaker amongst many other talents. So uh, we became friends through the world of speaking mm -hmm. and campus activities. Yep. We met at a conference in Miami, Florida many years oh ago. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. We went swimming and yeah. oh my gosh, what a good time. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> and so from there, you have hosted many leadership conferences for me over the years. Mm -hmm. And every time I know that my students have shared with me that the quantity of what you shared with them was quality for their lives and mm. that they took it and they're still using it but they also found in you a friendship mm. and that was always surprising to the students because so many times when we hire talent to come into a campus we only have them for a few minutes and for you you make that few minutes so valuable it's mm. it's a gift that they keep unwrapping through time but then also you make yourself available if they reach out to you at later times in mm -hmm. their sure. lives and so that's been so precious for them and and as an educator, that has been a gift for me to watch. So mm. tell us how you got started in the area of speaking. Well, that goes way back. Um, but I can actually pinpoint the moment of when I wanted to be, I, when, I, when I discovered the dream okay. of being a professional speaker was because of a speaker that came into my campus okay. to speak. And where did you go to college? A couple different places. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, you get to transfer around with scholarships and things. So uh, yeah, well, I, I actually have two undergraduate degrees, and it took me eight years to get those uh -huh. from two different schools, and a uh -huh. BA and a BS, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was floundering. I'm sure many uh, can understand that, like not yes. knowing what you want to do. And um, so for me, I was I, I graduated from Black Hills, uh, no, from San Jose State University in mm -hmm. California, and I was a gymnast there and mm -hmm. did all that mm -hmm. stuff and. You know, I graduated with a diploma in uh, psychology, and I'm like, I'm going to be a psychologist. But the moment I graduated, my mission in life shift, mm -hmm. shifted from like, in my view, if this is normal, and this is, I, in my view of psychology, my limited view, I was going to take people who were here and bring them to normalcy. That's okay. how my simplistic view of psychology, okay. which is no, it's definitely not true. But uh, my shift went from I wanted to take people here to there. Mm -hmm. And so psychology didn't seem like a viable route for me. So, But it helped prepare you with some of the courses and things oh because gosh. you were able to think yeah. through some things that had you not had those that degree and those courses, mm -hmm. it might have been a little bit more challenging to segue into your next degree yeah. and into your future work. I mean, I easily could have said I just wasted four years, mm -hmm. but, but I didn't. didn't. Oh my gosh, it <laughs> helped so much. But I didn't necessarily know that right. until later down the road. Where I'm like, wow, journey. I'm using this. Yes. Yeah. So I was at Black Hill State going to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in my eighth year of undergraduate work, my last year, and I saw a poster for a speaker called Major in Success, and he was gonna come talk to you about how you can utilize college to get your dream job. But I was kind of at the end of college, so. Mm -hmm. um, I went to that program, and I had seen, or he, I discovered that you can actually be a speaker for a living, mm -hmm. and I had no idea that was a career. And so it was like this moment of clarity. And I'm like, I'm gonna be a speaker for a living. I didn't know how I was gonna do it or what, or anything. I was just like, this is it. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting is I was sitting next to Tommy Jo Castile. Mm. And she was, she's like, I discovered my dream job. And uh, she's like, I'm gonna be, not dream job, but a path of passion is she's gonna be Miss Rodeo USA. And she did it. Well, she ended up going to be Miss Rodeo South Dakota. Yes. She won it and then yes. she got into the big show and she yes. took honorable mention. Yeah. But still. That's right? still a win in my book. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, it just all came down to 
deciding, I saw a poster and deciding to go see a speaker. And it completely changed the trajectory. Yeah. I mean, I was going, I was scheduled to student teach and then get a job as a teacher. And then, boom, this one speaker changed my whole life. And I, I had to make it work, but it tapped into a passion. And I saw him speak. I discovered he could be a speaker. And I'm like, I want to do what you're doing. I went and talked to him afterwards. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. I wanted to be a speaker, and I wanted to I talked to him about how to do it. So I ended up taking him out to dinner. And I was literally in shock. Like, I was, I was shaking. I was quivering. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure I was white in the face. But I was just, like, taking copious notes. What do I need to do? And he said, go to this conference, I think. That, I don't know if that was the conference we met at. Probably wasn't. It wasn't. But it was a conference. He said, go to this conference in a month. And so I made it happen to go do it. And, you know, I knew we often do things that are like, I don't see what's the point of this. You know, it's like you join an organization. It's like, I don't know. It's just kind of work. But all these little things that I did led up to the they culmination. Were the touch yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if I didn't do these little things, if I didn't join that organization, if I didn't listen to him and try to figure out how to get to the conference and make it happen, like none of this would happen. And the fact that he was open to meeting with you, his job was over, but he took extra time because yeah. he saw the hunger in you and he knew mm-hmm. that you were a potential. Yeah. And that's what a gift. Yeah. Because so, people don't realize when when individuals like you come to campus you also do fortune 500 companies you do other uh private one-on-one uh programs where you're you're coaching and that Mm. costs a lot of money and so when you're taking your time to work with a student they're not having to pay that out of their pocket it's a gift you're giving them it's your investment in them because you see their potential. And that's what he did for you. Yeah, absolutely. And you've been able to pay it forward. Yeah. That's yeah, so, cool. so much. But I do know, like, I, I had, he, I didn't realize in the background when I talked to him that um, I had worked at a summer camp. Oh, and really? I was like, I don't know, I love it. I'm having a blast. But that's, that summer camp was pivotal, pivotal sure. in my, in my career. Because while I was there, two, his girlfriend and his best friend, Gary, yeah. And, uh, and Deanna. Um, they actually yeah. were at a camp that summer. I that, know Gary and yeah, Deanna. That's yeah. why I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but they were actually at a camp that I was at that summer, and I, they were observing my camp to learn how to be a facilitator. Oh, wow. So they saw me, and they knew me. So Patrick's knew like, I action. met this guy because, yes. you know, as a speaker, I get a lot of people that are like, oh, I want to be a speaker. Mm-hmm. And it's like, everybody says that, but what, what sets you apart? What's going to make it different? Mm-hmm. And the fact is I took the action on what he said to do, and he knew me from his trusted people in his life. And they're like, yeah, he's amazing. So, so when I got to that, references. Yeah, unbeknownst to me. Yeah. So when I got to that conference, he was like, I want you to come and do my program, be my associate, and I'll train you to do my program. If they can't afford me, they can bring you in. Sure. It's not less of a program, but it's a lower price point. Right, right. So, um, I mean, when because he said that. you were that, in training, and that's how the mentorship happens. Yeah, like yeah. He became speak. my and mentor. And then let's step forward a few years farther into your career. And now uh, you had developed with a colleague of yours an entire series program called Lots. Leadership Dogs. And mm-hmm. in, in addition to that, you started it getting involved with writing chapters of books, and then that evolved into you writing a book. Yep. And so it's, again, you were continuing your education in a new field through the support of mentorship, and then you were able to take that and then create your Dream. program, yeah. your uh, yeah. vision, and then to put your teachings into into mm-hmm. action with writing that curriculum and then being able to deliver it. How good does that feel? It's so amazing. I never, you know, in the beginning, I never would have charted this trajectory and where it is, but. It's just been carving out this passion to passion to passion. These, I've been doing this full time now for 23 years. Mm-hmm. And I still am super excited about what I do because it's still, it's still my passion. Mm-hmm. You know, and I keep following and taking me new places, but I'm always following my passion. That's my guiding light. Mm-hmm. And I know we get stuck in like, I can't follow my passion because there's no money in it or this and that, but, or it's scary and it's risky and it's unknown and there's not a, it's like there's no clear path. Like an accountant, there's a very clear path. But well, society tells us. Yeah, you, society. You need to go and to, parents. <laughs> you get a job where you have the insurance, you have retirement, you have, you have, you have. Yeah. And so then it gets 
very scary if what you feel called to do does not fit the box that yeah. you've been trained especially in, scary you're supposed to be in yeah and yeah i mean i've never had a full-time job like two months i had a nine to five uh, but you know i've never been uh, i've never been given insurance i've always had to buy my own and it's like you're it's easy. used to it yeah it's <laughs> no biggie it. yeah yeah so um with leadership dogs let's talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit um when you do that presentation for us you break it down into breakout sessions so that it's actually building you do other sessions and then we get to the leadership dogs and then we return to another portion of the program that mm -hmm. you had introduced at the beginning yeah. so by the end of our time together because again troy does conferences so we have you more than an hour right so we can build this so students starting with you they're coming in going, mm, I got to meet this person. Is he going to make a fool of me? Am I going to make a fool of myself? There's a trust that has to be built. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about how you build that trust with your audience to be able to get them to a point of comfort where then they can be open to listening to mm -hmm. what Leadership Dogs is all about and being yeah. honest with themselves. Tell us a little bit about that. So, so a lot of different ways I can go with that. And it goes when, back to your teaching degree. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. But you know, as, as my path has gone on with the speaking, um, I discovered like three main phases that I was in. The first phase of being a speaker is you're in your head. And so when you're in your head, you're not connecting with the audience. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about what you're saying. They're not even seeing you. Mm -hmm. The second phase I went into was being out of my head and in the space. Okay. and totally present. I'm not worried about what I'm saying. I'm focused on you and I can hear somebody sneeze over there and I can say, bless you, you know? Yeah. And I can be present with them and connect. But then I found this third level that I didn't know existed. It might sound a little corny, but the third level is when I come in to speak, I come in with the intention of, I will love my audience. Okay. And it's shifted my interactions. Mm -hmm. And I went from like going to speak and they'd be like, thanks for coming, you know, yeah. to that was amazing and we need you back. Mm -hmm. And I think it's that third level that I finally mm -hmm. reached that I didn't, I've never seen it written in a book. Yeah. But when I go out there, I'm just fully open to the potential of everybody I see. And, and I just, I see people as being brilliant, wonderful, and amazing in their own right. Mm -hmm. And I think that they sense that. Mm -hmm and that they can, they can feel comfortable in that and safe in that. Mm -hmm. So it's really about how I'm showing up. And then, of course, it's all the tips and skills and ideas that I get about mm -hmm. how to ask the right questions mm -hmm. and being open and listening. And so there's so much to it, but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I like to bring it all in. And that's why the students come back with their comments to me mm -hmm. of how much they feel loved and how much they are gleaning from you and why they can take it farther in their life. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's that love. Isn't that yeah, cool? It is love. So, <laughs> Sounds corny, but it's good. It's good. <laughs> love works the best. That's what everybody says. Yeah. You put it into action. Mm. Um, so another thing that you do with my students that you introduced two times ago when you were here, and I've every year that I have you back, I ask you, can you do this again? What is it? It's a little bit called, it's called wellness. That's oh, yeah, what yeah, we yeah, call yeah. it. And I love this because it goes back to understanding and being in the moment and just focus and mm -hmm. with so many people not just our students really struggle with sleep they really struggle with stress and anxiety yeah. they struggle with feeling a clarity and a calmness in stressful situations through the day yeah and so you have given us a gift many times when you're here and we're planning on you doing this again um, could you talk to us a little bit about what wellness is in the presentation you do for us? Because it's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, it, this program is more meditative in a way. Yes. It's not like, woohoo, you know, right, which is right. everything else is like, woo, and this one's like, okay, calm. Yes. But it's, it's really about shifting from the, para, from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic nervous system, from the fight or flight to the 
to the rest and digest. And, and a lot of people don't realize that they're, they hear that. They hear it in the news, they hear it in commentary, mm -hmm. but they really don't understand what that means. And you do a wonderful yeah. job of going into it, and we don't have the time for you to go I into know, it. I know, I wish we could. Just give me but, seven hours, we know. <laughs> <laughs> but there definitely is. So could you just give us a 30 second wrap maybe on the difference between the two systems? So I, apparently, 95% of our waking hours is spent in this fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And we don't even realize that. And right. so we're le releasing all these stress hormones. And these stress hormones are coursing through our body. And it's like, you know, the, the, the whole, I've got a saber-toothed tiger running at me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But we, we're not afraid of being attacked by a wild animal, but our body still reacts that way. Mm -hmm. And so it's chronic, and it's in the background. And so all these stress hormones are coursing through our body, and that ages us. And it stresses us, and it causes I mean, pretty much any ailment you can have can relate back to stress and breathing. Mm -hmm. So during this program, we teach a lot of breathing exercises mm -hmm. to shift you like that. I mean, not that fast, but really right, fast. Right. So you can, you can about instantly seven shift minutes, it. You've started to teach us and we're starting to understand and realize how we can take our place, take, remove ourselves from that fight mm. or flight into the digest and... and in the rest and digest, rest and digest, feed and breed. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. In the, in the and parasympathetic. And so, in that area with the parasympathetic, what are we focusing on there? Well, when we're removing ourselves from the fight or flight, it's it's all about slowing down. Mm -hmm. You know, because our mind is racing and it's and it's creating this stress and anxiety. So when you can shift your thoughts and shift your breath to a place that is relaxing. Um, it, it, it changes the chemical balance you have in your body. Well, and even when you switched talking to, uh, mm. to that, you, your voice changed, yeah. you slowed down, you calmed down because you, you're very talented. You practice this yourself all the time. All the little tips and tricks, right? Yes. Yeah. So, but yeah. I try to be in that space as much as I can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I know that in the past you've taught us how to do breathing so that no matter where we're at and we have to get to sleep and we're just stressed, we can, there's breathing for that. And then there's breathing to wake us up in the morning. Yeah. And it's just amazing. And then part of the wellness is also the hydration, correct? Mm -hmm. And the water intake and oh keeping the brain just fortified with the water. Yeah. And so much of the fight or flight is oftentimes because we're not hydrated enough and we don't even realize that. Yeah, we don't get it. We're so, as a society, we're chronically dehydrated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So one tip okay. for in the morning, when you get up, before you have breakfast, first thing you do is drink a big glass of water. I mean, it's, yeah, so drink a lot of water, drink a big, big glass of water. But what you do now is you take a lemon, half a lemon, whole lemon, whatever you want, squeeze it in that water and just drink it. It's lemon water, no mm -hmm. sugar, no anything. It's mm -hmm. just lemon water. And there's antiviral properties to lemon juice. So it's going to give you a little added protection of antiviral, right? I'm not going to say it's going to protect you, right. but it's, it's an added layer of protection. Mm -hmm. And you're rehydrating your body because when you wake up and you have breakfast, you're breaking the fast of sleeping all night. Mm -hmm. And so if you can fill that with the water, um, you'll find like it's going to it's going to clean out some toxins and your body's just going to be healthier mm -hmm. and it's going to eliminate toxins easier and you're going to lose puffiness it's counterintuitively but you'll lose puffiness when you drink more water in the morning or just throughout the day mm -hmm. but that's such a great way to start the day mm -hmm. it is lemon and water i was addicted to caffeine like it was 10 to 11 cups, seven of those cups before I left for work in the wow. morning to try and get energized. And my doctor said, you have got to cut caffeine out. You're killing yourself. You have no more caffeine. Mm -hmm. And so I started drinking 24 ounces of water. I just have a bottle that I fill and um. it's waiting for me when I get up in the morning. I drink that and I don't have to have coffee. Now I like the flavor, so I'll do decaf once in a while, but okay. I'm loving the teas and, and it really, it gives me the energy I need that my brain thought needed to be caffeine. When yeah. in reality, I was, just, I was dehydrated and I was dehydrating myself more with the amount of caffeine I was putting in. Yeah. And so I'm a testimonial. Yeah, I and, live you know, by that water every morning. It's a really great shift because part of the reason we drink caffeine is to pop us back into that fight or flight yes. to keep us there and then constantly. And so if you can just go drink water, 
be more mellow and calmer, you've got different chemicals running course into your body. Yeah. Wonderful, too. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah, and you know, we're going to teach a breathing exercise that's uh, three minutes, and it's like the five-hour energy drink. Okay. So you don't have to use caffeine. You just do this breathing exercise. Okay. It's really quick. It's kind of crazy. Okay. But it, boom, it amps you up. Awesome. <laughs> so um, for people who want to uh, learn more about you, connect with you, yeah. how do they get a hold of you in social media? Because well, I know you're in the world of social media. Yeah, I am. I've got a couple of different websites. One is Stendy Inspirations. Dot com S T E N D E Stendy Inspirations with an S Stendy Inspirations or TroyStendy.com that goes there too. And let's spell and your name of the last name again because I started to laugh S is, in there. S is in Sam, T is in Tom, E N D E. Yes. Stendy. Yeah. And then um, there's another one if you want to learn more about the breathing and the uh, and that Focus, it's yeah. experience chi breathing dot com. And chi H I it's spelled Q I. Oh. I know. There's so many different ways to spell it. Yeah. So experience, Q I Chi, experience Chi breathing dot com, and that's this has got some good stuff there. And if you you know, you can sign on for the newsletter, and we'll send you a a really powerful five minute energizing breath exercise that I talked about. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for and, being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Always so good to be back. It's I love coming back. Always great to be with you. These students are phenomenal. Thank so you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the event. I always say I have the best students in the world from around the world. There you so go. So you get to meet more of them this weekend. Yay. Yay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we appreciate you tuning in. Thank you so much for being here. We look forward to seeing you the next time here at the University of Finley Art and Culture Show. Until then, be well.